A woman finds a job as a babysitter for a troubled child with severe allergies and communication issues. But the strong bond she develops with the boy could lead to serious consequences. Millicent lies on the back seat of the bus as she watches a mother nursing her baby. Moments later, she reaches her destination and enters a house, where she is interviewed by a woman named Rebecca. Rebecca asks the woman about her education, age, and babysitting experience, while her child sits at the end of the table busily drawing. Millicent says she's a college student taking a break from school while working on her thesis about pediatric allergies. She adds that she has no family, and flusteredly says she has no boyfriend either. Johnny, Rebecca's child, is sickly, mute, and suffers from multiple allergies. When the mother sees the boy grab Millicent's arm, she remarks that her son likes the babysitter. Rebecca tells the new nanny about Johnny's rigid schedule, prescriptions, restrictive diet, and allergies, ranging from a sun allergy, to nickel, and even artificial fabric. Rebecca also expects Millicent to do light household chores, since she'll be busy focusing on her career as an author. The older woman says her books are about family, love, and relationships, which she thinks isn't for the nanny to read, as she's too young to understand such concepts. Then, Rebecca warns her to follow all her instructions regarding her son, including never letting Johnny leave the house. During their conversation, Millicent is distracted by a shirtless man watering the plants outside. Later, the man, Rebecca's husband Jacob, enters the house and Millicent introduces herself, visibly attracted to the married man. He offers her some chocolate covered in aluminum wrapping, just as Rebecca joins them. The babysitter watches the couple curiously as they playfully flirt in front of her. Later, Millicent rides the bus home, where she takes a bite of an apple, but accidentally drops it when the bus suddenly stops. She runs after the fruit to the middle of the bus, picks it up, and holds onto the bar as the vehicle starts moving. Suddenly, a man walks up behind her, peering over her shoulder, making Millicent uncomfortable. She starts to hallucinate that the man is a clothless, goat-headed devil trying to tempt her, so she makes a mad dash off the vehicle as soon as it stops. On the sidewalk, she tries to calm herself down, then ingests a drop of lysergic acid. Later, she sits in Dr. Welsh's office for her scheduled session. She talks about her dream of becoming a better mother compared to the one she's seen in the park whom she believes neglect their kids. Days ago, Millicent encountered a girl in the park who seemed lost. She took the girl back to her mother who indifferently explained her daughter wasn't lost before she continued her conversation with the other moms. Annoyed, Millicent ran off with the girl, which prompted the mother to chase her down and slap her for attempting to take her daughter. In the present, she opens up to Dr. Welsh about her violent tendencies, but the psychiatrist dismisses her concerns and says women aren't violent. The doctor thinks they should lower her medication dose, but she rejects the suggestion and even denies ever experiencing a hallucination. The doctor then points out her other issue regarding not finding the right foster home, and Millicent says the mothers are fantastic, yet leaves a worrying statement about how all the fathers are always the same. Meanwhile, Rebecca and Jacob discuss their new nanny, since the man deems her innocent. Rebecca believes the nanny is chased when she recalls her flustered reaction when asked if she has a boyfriend. Eventually, their conversation leads to them making out in their living room, as they make love, Rebecca asks her husband to choke her, which Jacob isn't comfortable with, but does so at her insistence. Suddenly, they're interrupted by Johnny's screams through the baby monitor, so Rebecca runs to her son's room and administers an epinephrine shot. When the boy inadvertently hits her, Rebecca asks Jacob for help, but the man looks on helplessly at his son's thrashing. Later, they find the aluminum chocolate wrapper in Johnny's hand, so Rebecca accuses her husband of not keeping the snack out of reach. He snaps and tells his wife to accept that Johnny has no allergies, but is very sick, and they need to send him to a proper facility to get help. However, Rebecca rejects the idea of abandoning their son. The next day, Millicent wakes up and takes a drop of her medication before having breakfast with her foster father, Roger. The much older man displays an unhealthy, obsessive behavior toward her and expresses how he wishes they could spend more time together. Later, while Millicent plays with Johnny in the yard, Jacob walks up to them. He asks the woman to take his son around the yard since he doesn't go outside often. After a while, the nanny finds Johnny squatting in the garden and sees him pull out a dead rabbit from the ground. The woman starts butchering and skinning the carcass with her pocket knife, and the boy watches with fascination in his eyes. She hands Johnny the rabbit's foot as a lucky keepsake, then asks if he's buried any more animals in the yard. That night, while washing up, Millicent finds undergarments and a dress in the bathroom. She mischievously puts on the undergarment, then steals Jacob's photo and Rebecca's dress. 
at home. After she takes a drop of medication in bed, she pulls out the stolen photograph and starts pleasuring herself. She hallucinates about making love with a married man, while Rebecca's blood pours out over them. Millicent snaps out of her hallucination when she notices that it's her time of the month. The next day, she dyes the stolen dress blue, while playfully mocking Rebecca and imitating the overbearing mother's words. She then heads to work where she plays with Johnny, drawing and painting each other's clothes. Minutes later, Jacob receives a call from Rebecca telling him she can't make it home for Johnny's birthday. Unbeknownst to them, Millicent listens in on their conversation from another phone in the house. The birthday ends disastrously when Johnny freaks out at the sight of his birthday candles. Millicent tries to comfort the child by bringing the rabbit's foot they turned into a keychain, claiming that it brings good luck. Touched, Johnny hugs the woman as she hums a song to help him sleep. Meanwhile, Jacob talks to Rebecca on the phone as he recounts what happened, blaming his wife's absence for Johnny's outburst. To make it up to him, Rebecca begins to entice her husband with words, who starts touching himself. Unfortunately, their call gets cut short, frustrating Jacob. Later, Millicent exits Johnny's room, when she is approached by an inebriated and disheartened Jacob, who makes advances toward her. Suddenly, Johnny comes out of the room, having wet himself, and the nanny quickly attends to the child. Before Millicent leaves for home, she's confused about what had happened. That night, Rebecca returns home home and heads to her sleeping son's room, where she says she wishes she wasn't afraid of him. All of a sudden, Johnny wakes and smacks his mother's face, and the shocked Rebecca hurriedly leaves the room. One day, Millicent and Johnny spend time in the playground, when a couple argues nearby, eliciting a tantrum from the child. Millicent immediately notices his reaction, and tells the child to cover his ears, teaching him to take deep breaths to calm himself down. The woman then tells the child that nothing bad will happen when she's with him, reassuring the lad. Millicent tells Johnny that her purpose on Earth is to study humans, but she isn't allowed to become one of them. Her words curry empathy with the child, believing he's found a kindred spirit who understands how he feels. Later, Millicent combs Johnny's hair with her fingers, and Rebecca remarks that they can't give him a haircut because he never stays still. Millicent suggests they give Johnny a haircut together, to which Rebecca nervously agrees. Rebecca starts playing with her son as Millicent snips at his long hair, and the mother is overjoyed with her son's progress. The nanny hands the mother some of Johnny's hair as a keepsake, which Rebecca happily accepts. However, Johnny bites his mother's hand when she touches him and storms away. Heartbroken, Rebecca walks off holding her injured hand and throwing away Johnny's hair. Panicked, Millicent tries to calm down as she takes out her medication, but finds out that she already used it all up. The following day, the woman asks Dr. Welsh if she can ever have a family of her own. She starts crying, prompting the doctor to sit next to her. Her. The woman hugs him, but proceeds to throw up all over his lap, so he leaves the room to clean up. After Dr. Welsh leaves, Millicent stops her charade and sneakily steals two bottles of the medication from the doctor's medicine drawer. Before the doctor returns, the woman goes back to her seat and pretends as though nothing happened. The following day, the couple leaves Millicent with Johnny while they have a dinner date. The nanny immediately laces the child's medication with her lysergic drops, tells Johnny the magical substance has helped her throughout her life and wants him to experience the same thing. Millicent and Johnny dance around with one another under the influence of Millicent's magical drops. Then, they head outside without the child's usual astronaut suit. Meanwhile, the couple argues about Rebecca's obsession with hurting herself. Dejected, Jacob tells her they should go home, when Rebecca suddenly leans her head over the man's groin and services him while he's driving. Concurrently, Millicent and Johnny cross the road. The distracted couple almost hits them, but thankfully, Jacob steps on the brakes in time. Worried, Rebecca runs to her son's side, telling the nanny to get away from Johnny. As she carries the child away in her arms, Johnny calls out mommy. Surprised, Rebecca is overjoyed at her son's first words. However, her joy turns to devastation when she realizes Johnny was actually calling out for Millicent. The child runs to the nanny's arms, and Millicent calms him down with her reassuring words. The scene before her frustrates the mother, as she snatches Johnny back and leaves. At home, Rebecca hurriedly tries to give Johnny a bath and begs her child to speak to her. Rebecca desperately tells her son that she is his mother, unaware that Johnny still feels the effects of the laced medication. Meanwhile, Jacob comforts Millicent, who's crying as she apologizes for messing everything up. The married man tells her that she's made a remarkable achievement, since she's the reason why his son spoke for the first time. Smitten, Millicent sits on the man's lap, who offers little resistance to her advances. The two then proceed to make love inside the car. Later that 
night, Jacob joins his wife in bed and reveals that he's having second thoughts about sustaining his role in his son's life. Rebecca sits up and tries to encourage her husband to stick together for their only child. Meanwhile, Millicent enters her home just to be bombarded with questions by her foster father. He reminds her that they made a deal when she became an adult and of what he had sacrificed for her, while pointing at his wheelchair-bound wife's photo, implying that the foster father had done something evil. To lower the man's guard, Millicent tells him to sit down and remove his belt. She slowly hugs him, then suddenly chokes him with his belt until he perishes. Furious, she starts stomping the dead man repeatedly while calling out his lewd ways. Then, the woman cuts some of his hair off, wraps up his body, and pushes him into an empty pool, where her foster mother's corpse is already in. She returns to the house to open her journal, wherein she details how each of her former foster fathers had tormented her, and she retaliated by slaying them one after the other. She takes a souvenir from every victim and places them in the journal, primarily clumps of their hair. The next day, Millicent comes upon Dr. Welsh talking with Rebecca about Johnny's progress. The doctor points out that the new nanny is the key to his recovery, unaware that the nanny in question is Millicent, whom he was led to believe is named Mary Beth. However, despite her son's progress, Rebecca doesn't want anything to do with the nanny. Armed with her knowledge about Rebecca's hatred towards her, Millicent laces Johnny's new medication. Later, she prepares an apple jam with honey for Johnny's sandwich. Jacob joins them in the kitchen and suggestively feeds the nanny some jam from his finger. All of a sudden, Jacob is stabbed in the leg by an angry Johnny. In Johnny's bedroom, Millicent tries to coax the reluctant child hiding under his blanket. With malicious intentions, Millicent gives Johnny her knife, asks him to use it on Rebecca if he wants to, and hugs him as he falls asleep. Afterward, Millicent is in the backyard when Jacob approaches to make love. They're unaware that Johnny is watching them from his bedroom window, screaming loudly at what he's witnessing. Hours later, Rebecca and Johnny spend time drawing and coloring together. The mother notices her son's screwed sketches of Millicent and her husband's affair. She snatches the illustration and notices the other artwork on the wall of the nanny replacing her in all of them. Rebecca asks her son if he likes Millicent more than his mother. However, all she gets in response is a blank stare from her son. The following day, Millicent starts throwing all the bottles of medication in the trash. As she talks to the mirror about her plan to start a family for Johnny, she recounts all the foster fathers who tormented her and how their deaths were all ruled as their own doing. She slowly turns around to see the lifeless Dr. Welsh foaming at the mouth on the floor. Millicent even relays how she thought the doctor was different from the rest, but he turned out to be just like them. The woman returns to Johnny's house where Rebecca denies her entry. Millicent refuses to leave and attacks the older woman through the door. Unable to enter the house, she rushes to Jacob's workshed and professes her love for him, but the man doesn't feel the same way. Concurrently, Rebecca tells her son that she'll stick by his side no matter what. The mother approaches as the lad holds the knife behind his back. Suddenly, Johnny stabs Rebecca's hand and she screams in agony. After pulling the knife out, Rebecca grabs Johnny's neck, asking if Millicent gave him the knife. When she realizes what she's doing, she lets go of her child and apologizes. Rebecca grabs her son and takes him to his room before she runs after Millicent, who is currently making love to her husband in the workshed. The wife stabs the woman with a knife, so Millicent tries to run toward the house. She sees Johnny approaching and begs him for help. However, Johnny stabs her repeatedly until she perishes. His stunned parents can only watch the carnage. Later, Jacob digs a grave, and they dump Millicent's dismembered body in it while discussing buying an adjoining lot if their son continues murdering his babysitters. Rebecca finally accepts his son's condition and throws out all his medication. She joins Johnny and asks him who his mommy is. Her child answers with a painful kiss on the lips and smiles at her, making the woman morbidly happy. Underneath the ground in the family's backyard are the corpses of Johnny's many slain babysitters, all in varying stages of decomposition. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.